happy to continue our live video session uh, for the one who just uh, joined our live video for, for the first time my name is Ruta and uh, we are having the third week of our interaction uh, virtual interaction of let's be uh, let's be connected uh, today we will present you one of our undergraduate programs uh, molecular biology and genetics and it is my honor to introduce you today's guest Professor Nedime Sarakinci, Chairperson of Near East University Center of Excellence, uh, Genetics and Cancer Diagnosis Research Center, uh, Faculty of Medicine and Head of Department of Medical Genetics. Hello, Professor. We would like to thank you for joining Hello. us today. Uh, how are you today? Hope you are fine. Yes, thank you. Despite the fact we are going through some crazy days, but we are very fine. Thank you. Hope you are well, you doing well too. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, we are very happy to have you today uh, as our honorable guest. Uh, and we would like to ask you thank some you. questions and uh, to let us to present our prospective students, one of our undergraduate program, Molecular Biology and Genetics. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, maybe start with, uh, can you briefly introduce yourself to our viewers and also how your life path lead you to Near East University and the position that you are at the moment? Well, if we start through my uh, life path and the education, probably we will fill the entire program. But I'll give you a brief summary. I have, um, I had a, quite a bit of a mixed education. That's uh, simply due to because from my childhood, I was always interested in biology and I always wanted to study biology. Uh, of course, when I was really young, I didn't know that was called biology, but I always, for, for example, I know that I have been a couple of times sent out from the home despite the fact it was really uh, cold, but the family got tired of me because I was questioning why they called the cat as named cat, but not dog. What was the difference? Because they both had similar four legs and so on. So I was very curious from this time. And then, of course, the more I learned about biology during my education, I got more into uh, more details who was basically what was deciding that we actually turn out who we are, where now we know that it's our genetic information. So I chose the path going through, studied the first as a bachelor degree, uh, biology, and then genetic as the uh, masters and PhD. Meanwhile, I start to study um, genetic counseling. And uh, for that, the time I was uh, studying, in, uh, you had to study also uh, medicine. So I got a kind of a special student condition. Back in my time, you could study them, some of the lectures that you, they could accept that you could study them together. So I did, uh, and I studied medicine in uh, Istanbul University Chapat Medical Faculty. Okay. But uh, mean, meanwhile, I continue to finish my bachelor degree in biology, then my master's in uh, medical genetics in, again in Chapa. Then uh, my PhD started in Marmara University in Turkey. I came to a level where I wanted to emphasize and actually use a quite recent established method on the cancer and uh, uh, looking for a very special parts of the genome that today we call them as telomeres. So for that, I choose to continue my PhD in Denmark. So then all of a sudden I had a medical education, medicine, studying, continuing. Then I was a PhD student in both in Marmara University. Then I became a PhD student in Aarhus University in Denmark. Then the quite messing start from there when there was too many dishes on my plate. So, and then I finished them one by one, except the medicine, I didn't. I, 2003, I got a, my first uh, as an associate professor position. I finished my 
PhD in Marmara University. I finished the PhD in Aarhus University. Then continued as a postdoc there and uh, became a, uh, made some applications and became an associate professor. Then got married. Then I got a kid. Then I said, okay, I cannot carry everything together. So I put on hold for my medical education, which is, uh, I was basically the fifth year, already two months past. So just eight months before I freeze the position of study and it's still, it's frozen. I don't, <laughs> I don't think I'll probably won't go back, but it gave me a kind of a medical notion because I'm a genetic counselor at the same time. So it actually gives me an advantage that I can be uh, ahead of quite many of uh, people like in the same education with me that I have a medical notion and I can uh, help with the cases much better. So that's a brief summary <laughs> about so myself. It's a bit confusing, a but yeah. deep down, the, what is you, you love what you're doing. Yes, that's the most important. You got really a big plate, as you said. <laughs> Maybe one day you will get uh, the wind again back to your medical uh, medical degree. If you you never know. I don't say no. Yes. Yeah, you never know. Yes. <laughs> uh, maybe no. So if I carry on from here. <laughs> yes. If I carry on from here to say, mainly I would today try to introduce about the molecular biology and genetic department which is the part of the art and sciences faculty but i can accept questions and answer questions on the medical uh, genetics which is the under the uh, medical uh, faculty so it's two different chair it's two different faculty medical genetics is a part of medical education and normally it goes for the postgraduate education when there is a clinical geneticist needs to study like when they have this specialty it is the depart that department helps them but the molecular biology genetics is the basic research and basic um, sciences. So if you want to have a bachelor degree and you want to do a, a researcher or a technical position or an educator, you start from there. So that's in a way it's an advantage that I can, I sit for both chairs and I had the education for both sides. So I can answer the questions much better, I think. That's great. That's great. Thank you, Professor. Uh, maybe maybe you know more specific information about undergraduate program of my, uh, yes. molecular biology and genetics. What does this program <coughs> covers? Sorry, what? What does this program covers for the students when uh, they are studying? <coughs> well, our program is a um, bit a uh, little differently organized uh, compared to many of the similar. Uh, uh, programs that is under the other sciences. We are mainly focused on the human genetics and hu uh, human uh, genetics or genetic problems, where still we have the basic genetics, basic information about the environment, um, evolution, and so forth. But we are mainly focused on the human and the, the problems related to that. And of course, the inheritance and how to solve these. That's okay, no problem. It's the season for it. <laughs> yes, I'm very sorry. So and uh, yeah. so it is kind of uh, a department where you get your basic information. But our difference compared to many other faculty is that we are heavily focused on the humans, uh, human problems, and here trying to address those problems basically. Um, we have courses that is. Um, standard that has to be there and it is given for example for the accreditation it is asked for the YÖK and YÖDAK which is the higher education for Turkey and uh, Cyprus. Uh, all these are covered and our diplomas are accepted, well accepted outside of um, Cyprus, Turkey, uh, everywhere. I have already, we have, uh, we had three um, term graduates and quite many of them I can name at the moment who is have, continuing their uh, postgraduate education in England and uh, Germany had no problem with their diploma because we have already covered all those and the topics are well um, identified. Again, we have one thing that is little different compared to other departments or similar departments that is like us. We, uh, we follow a modular system, which means that every lecturers that they actually come and teach the topics they have experiences. 
and uh, they studied before they did research so we are actually sharing experiences together just you know go ahead giving the basic information so in the modular system you have a better chance to be more multidisciplinary and uh, interdisciplinary talking to each other and that what we have a feedback so far from our students, they're really happy with that because you, you get to hear the same topic from different angles, different point of views and with the different experiences, which allows them to have their build their own opinion and how to approach the problems. So that's a good, good advantage about it, I think. Yes, uh, so. uh, yes what does my, uh, assessment methods are being used in this program? Well, that differs a bit because we are following, even though we are connected to um, lo higher, local higher education and also the uh, Turkey ones we follow, but we are more following like um, generally for, because molecular biology and genetics is every subject is international, but this is kind of more international because the topics are developing very fast. In many of the cases, we don't even have a one book we are just following daily articles. So which that means that you follow the, uh, you build your assessments based on those. And it covers like, in some cases we have standard ordinary exams, which could be essays or could be just multiple choices. But in some cases we actually have, for example, we are already trying to prepare these students. They should be able to give a scientific, how to write a scientific assessment. Like to learn them when it comes to if they follow how to write an article by giving a couple of essay lectures. So it's the lectures are just for doing essays constantly and how to discuss a topic that you have an opinion and how you learn to uh, use the current literature and strengthen your opinion. So we're trying to teach them these discussions. Same time, they are uh, they have a course where they do presentations only to present how to. Uh, present your knowledge and skills and get discussions and the rest is just as we know from the other topics you have normal like um, studying and lectures and then exams but we have these three four that is quite specific preparing them for the future of already now uh, first two years is just very basic so the first year is general reminding the basic biology and the basic genetics and introducing the basic rules. Second year is getting more uh, enlarging the knowledge that they have carried on if they had, for example, in high school education. Then the third year, which I'm sure most of the students will say that's the hardest year where they actually learn everything new and how to use that information in the human genetics and learning the research tools together, which is all is new. So you would say in every topic, there is a one year is, you would say this is the hardest year. So for us, the third year is the hardest one. By the end of that year, they actually have an internship, which we allow them right after they got the all necessary information, they can go out in the field for 45 days to use their skills and see how is in the application before graduate. So they have a year to cover up if they notice or if you notice there's a, a gap or you know they haven't learned something enough so it is at the summer of the third year normally they use that internship to combine all the information and the last year <clears throat> the first half of the last year is uh, again have some topics to prepare for the graduation and prepare for them the real scientific world to study more than just being a student just being a candidate scientist and the second semester of the uh, fourth year which is the last semester there they have a graduation project of course most of the time it's theoretical but it also allows them to write a small essay that in sometimes they can even get it in a small communities published so they have um, when they apply for a uh, postgraduate education they have something to show outside of the transcripts they are great this is what i did and this is what i believe how i can progress from there because they are trying to address a question that they have chosen and they choose a lecturer to guide them as a mentor and they prepare this and uh, for evaluation we have some outside um, 
examiners. We send the essays to them and then they get their grades from outside. It, so it's the very first time they get the international evaluation. So learn the process, but also build up their confidence because often getting good critics from outside and succeeding makes them like when they graduate, they kind of have the feeling I am enough now for, for my level. I did very well. So that's what exactly. all about what we're trying to give them. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, so the program duration is four years, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, also and of course, sometimes depending on if the background they have, if they are coming from a country that they don't have at all background, then they may end up having a uh, fundament year, but a foundation year. For, but often they are starting from the first year and it's it takes only four years. Okay. Uh, speaking about the summer training program, which is uh, being held on the after third year, uh, is it mandatory to make the training program in North yeah. Cyprus or, for example, they can come back to their country if they have opportunity to do it there? They, they can do it anywhere, anywhere in the world. But there is one condition. It's international again. It should be well recognized. Either it's a governmental, I mean, they can choose to go in their country, but it should be either governmental or if it's a private place, the, their government should accept it as a well-respected or well-accepted um, laboratory or a, if it's a university, university. We are trying to indirectly control that where they get this training education, it is the right place because that you can find you're a student, you don't know, you can go and find some private places, but they are not actually really doing any genetics. It, it could be some just a routine um, blood test, which won't be any beneficial for them. So that's why we are trying to have a little bit control over what they are doing, but they can do it any other countries. It doesn't have to be in Cyprus. That's very nice. Which is, actually, we encourage them to do it outside of Cyprus because they can, during the education, they hear all um genetically specific diseases problems we show them the how to do the lab work here so they learn everything about cyprus and the what, what is most common here but going abroad somewhere will allow them to get more variations get to meet different diseases get to meet different applications because every lab has their own rules even though we have international standards but there are small differences so it's always a good thing to go out and learn the other parameters that other laboratories are applying. Yes, of course. Uh, for your teaching, uh, from your teaching experience, what qualities do, uh, do successful student processes uh, who graduate from this course? Uh, yeah, that's that's not that easy to answer. But one thing I always say to students. What makes you successful, it's not your grades, actually. It, it has never been. I mean, I came where I am. I don't recall any time they asked me what was my grades. For example, I love human genetics. They never asked me which, what grade I am. It is important in the new path, but what, what you do afterwards, how you use the information, how intelligently you can join into any discussions, how you can contribute to field. If you are going somewhere and then people are discussing at some scientific topic and you are not capable of joining, even though you got top grade, does not really help for you. You should be able to join. That's why we are sort of, we built our education based on essays, presentations, and because they need to know the discussion. Of course, to pass, you need to have some grades. That's, that's given, but having always, I don't know, AA is not the necessary. It's more important what you can contribute to the field, and uh, which is one of your, uh, this graduation essay is one of the first one. You can show yourself and, uh, and how much you can join into what is existing literature. That, that is what it counts. That's normally, this is what I uh, encourage my students. Be open-minded. Don't be like uh, um, uh, fixated and memorize everything. Follow up and do extra reading up because our field compared to many other is quite specific and daily variations. Um, I can give you an example. I work 
as a research uh, area. I work with the telomeres in the angle of uh, um, cancer and aging. I would say there is a period, there is sometimes yearly you can have like more than 300 papers, really good papers comes out, which means to keep you updated, you need to read them regularly. You cannot just say, okay, I'm done, I'm graduate, I'm a professor, that's enough. Once in a while I turn a page, it doesn't help. If you want to be a successful, you never stop reading, you never stop uh, keeping you updated. That's that's the real success, actually. That's And of course, you have to love what you're doing. That's an, another point because, um, as I said, in our topic, it's the third year is the tough, but if you love what you're doing, even though it's hard, you enjoy it and you can move on. If you don't love what you're studying, you just randomly choose it and then you hated it. It's always very difficult. Everything given to you is a burden more than a pleasure. So you have to find the, or the students has to find the balance for the success. I haven't been, at least in this department, I haven't, or we have like so far three semesters, three terms graduates. I haven't met anyone who came back and say, I don't want this. I met people who want to say, I really liked it. I want to go further. I Can I spring towards the medicine, which we help them. They are now medical students. But I haven't met anyone who retrieved themselves. That's really nice. So that's probably that's the good. success. Your student must have the passion for studies. And uh, as well as you mentioned that, open-minded uh, it's very important to be open-minded because i believe this is one of the uh, programs which information uh, is changing every day so you have to keep updated yourself and uh, not to stick to the information that you studied for example four years ago because it might change very soon yeah exactly i mean have a look at it. the days we are in Pandemic, for example, okay, it's not directly only a geneticist, it's the, all the molecular biology. This is the molecular biology comes in the way. Imagine if I stayed with these skills and the knowledge that the day I graduate, I would have no idea what is going on, but keeping yourself updated. And I think within this uh, uh, lockdown period, two and a half months we were in, I read it daily, more than 100 articles to keep myself, what is going on, what is the updated. This is what, it, that's why I said, you have to feel passionate about what you're doing. It's not the easiest topic because you need to always keep on connecting the skills and the knowledge you have learned before and keep moving forward. Yes. But this I really like... Yes, professor? Yeah, I really like what I'm doing, so I don't regret. Often the students ask me, I mean, it's really tough, and the research is getting less and less all around the world. You get less money, and uh, it gets more and more competition. But I love it. I love what I'm doing, and um, I think that's uh, often I have it as a return from the students. They kind of says every time we came down, we don't want to continue. We just pay a visit to you, and then we kind of says we can conquer the world. <laughs> Because I love what I'm doing, and I think this is the fantastic thing. If you love where you're working, if you love you, what you're doing, any obstacles becomes much easier. Of course, there's ob obstacles. Life isn't easy anywhere. But when you love it, you can just keep on doing it because you know that there will be sooner or later a light by the end of the tunnel, and the, that when you see the light, that will worth the I don't know, it's like a big mountain of goals that you conclude all of a sudden. Thank you, Professor. It's really motivation. You are giving really big motivation for the students, I believe. Uh, as you mentioned uh, about the postgraduate studies that you are getting the uh, students who is coming to you and saying that I want to continue my studies. So uh, what would be the advantages for the students uh, after graduation from bachelor degree to continue their uh, master as well PhD? Uh, also, maybe you can uh, specify the programs that the students after molecular biology and genetics could study. Um, let me put it this way. Once they graduate, as like a, they finish the first four years, 
So th there are a couple of choice they already can do. One thing uh, they need to ask, this is normally I give this talk uh, the last semester with these students. They need to ask themselves, okay, where I would like to see myself in five years? Can I be in a research lab, just keep on researching, but don't go further academic degrees, but every day I challenge some new uh, questions and trying to address that. If they say, which the internship in the last uh, summer before the last year, which is the phase three, this is where they should ask the question and understand the position. If they really enjoy being in the lab, this is the right time. Stop once you educate and go into where the um, technology or uh, technology transfer laboratories or uh, there are some uh, developing, for example, drug development or uh, technology development, same time biological development or a routine biological tests laboratories. They can have positions and all of our graduates get so far, I've been following them. Everybody find uh, jobs and they, they really enjoy it. So this is one possibility. Of course, if they internship time is 45 days, if they discover I don't like to be in the lab, but I like to share my knowledge, then you can take extra courses like pedagogical education and you choose to go be a, a educator like a teacher or something in that direction, they can do it. This, our education allows that, it's combined, so they can choose that. If they say like me, no, I'm really curious, I wanna do it further, then you can go for a master's and PhDs. We have a program, for example, in Nearest, again, I chair for that program in the, under the Health, and, uh, Health Institute, Health Sciences Institute, they, and they, and it's again called, uh, this time it's called Medical Biology and Genetics Program. They can choose to have a master, then PhD degrees there. They can go other universities. As I said, we have um, a two students currently uh, having their masters in Germany. Two students are having their uh, masters in England. One, uh, I have a PhD student already came to a level PhD in China and uh, one in Pakistan, one in uh, India. So quite uh, many of them internationally distributed and they can move on. I also have a student that has did uh, their PhDs with me and they went to work uh, uh, certain postdoc years in, uh, uh, in Africa. And now they are coming back to do a research, further research with us. So we have like, they can keep on having interchange and combined work with us still, which is really good also. Uh, our students quite internationally distributed. We have basically students all around the world uh, because when we send abroad to Europe, we also have some European students coming. We have uh, from different regions of Africa, we have from Turkey and Cyprus. Um, also they are, most of the students think this is really nice because they have different point of views and learn about what is important for each country. And then they have a good really discussion on the genetic basis because the geography matters a little bit on the genetic diseases. So it gives different aspects for them uh, and to do. So depending on where they wanna see themselves, there's lots of options. In my time, you could either be a, a routine worker or go for an academy or I become a teacher. But now they have more than six, seven actually choices. Um, because with the new, especially E rules, every producing like biological product producing um, companies has to gradually build their own quality control laboratories before they apply for a, a accreditation, which means they need to employ people like our graduates, like molecular biology and genetics, because those are the working in the front line and they are capable of it. Those especially graduate from us, they know they can do these tests. So that gives them one extra choice to join. Of course, as I said, in the private or a hospital laboratories, they can take place. They can be um, teachers. They can choose to go for academy to further progress. And then they have the 
is uh, developmental companies where they do, for example, either they are trying to develop new techniques, new kits for testing or new drugs. Again, they employ molecular biology and genetic graduates. Um, yeah. Yeah, I actually, now that I mentioned, I remember three of my students in is employed in uh, three different companies in Turkey doing such works. We are having good contact. That also allows them that they build a bridge between their company and our university to do a kind of a collaborative industrial collaborative works, which we use them as a bridge of our next comer students to go beside them to do their internship. So there's a good networking in that sense. So they have good positions. Yes, thank you. So as we can see, the, the graduated students has a huge variety of the job opportunities as well as not only locally, but internationally as well. Thank you for such yes. a good explanation. Yes. Uh, but of course, I have to emphasize that these, um, it's not for every um, department like similar departments in the other universities they don't have the same opportunity it's also a bit of the position that we are placed here and also NIS has lots of good connections for different countries and a collaboration that allows them to be more international compared to the others so they don't have to put lots of effort themselves it's given we have the connections already built as a university that's a quite privileged and lucky Compared to my studentship, is they are really lucky. <laughs> uh, would I be correct if I would say that uh, Near East University is one of the very little uh, number of universities who offers this program? Am I correct? Uh, yes, it is limited. I mean, especially in Cyprus, there is two only university has this similar program. But we are, as I said, we are more Europeanized by focus on the humans, and we are the only one who is doing that. Entire That's island, great. not only the North Cyprus, but entire island compared That's to. That's great. Thank so. you, Professor. Uh, also, uh, can uh, current and already graduated students, I believe you are very busy, especially this time, uh, reach out for you for your help and assistance when they need some additional knowledge uh, for yeah. their studies or even uh, their future life in job uh, when they are already starting to work can they reach out for you yes they do they do and actually uh, that makes me uh, very proud because uh, especially when it's special days i uh, get lots of return when they have problems or they want to communicate and sometimes i get even whatsapp saying that is the i met with X6 person in this Congress and they knew about you and then they offer me a position since I'm graduate from you. So it's these returns makes you really proud and happy. And uh, I'm one of the, um, I'm a person, I never close my office door. Not that we are not at the office nowadays, but I never close it. I always tell everybody, if you come, if the door is open, just put your head and ask if I have the time, we'll talk. If not, then we'll agree on a time, we'll go ahead and they can reach me through everywhere. All these uh, Facebook, Messenger, WhatsApp, everywhere. And just a good example, uh, one of my students during the uh, this um, eight period, like Bayram period, sent me a message saying that, um, is that happy Bayram? But, then the wording, he put it that you are my uh, kind of um, not biological, but a supportive mother. Even though I'm sitting in Germany, you are the first one I come to think to send a message because you, you are the first one always when I have a problem who reach out for me and help me. That really touched me now, even though I'm saying it now, I'm almost cry. That really touched me to have such a connections because they're our future. I mean, you know, we, sooner or later we will all be retired and. Uh, move on, but those are who's going to sit here and having them already with this positiveness and knowing how to connect and helping those who comes after them is my aim. So therefore, I'm trying to set up a good example. And when they return and appreciate that they actually follow the same path, it makes me really happy and proud. That's very nice, Professor. Uh, also, thank uh, you. During this uh, COVID-19 situation, 
I believe uh, the previous methods that you were using for the uh, assessment methods that you mentioned before, and also the methods, uh, the way you teach the students, I believe none of them uh, is working anymore because we had to switch to the uh, distance education, uh, distance platform education. So may you a little bit specify for us and for the, our viewers how the online classes uh, was held at and also the examination. Well, um... Of course, the, for, I start with the hard part, the examination, because that's most of the students are focused on that. Uh, instead of normally, you would do a midterm and a finals. Instead of doing that, we increased, uh, we lot, made lots of quiz and an essay. The idea for that, because having an online exam is relatively new. They never did it, and you can have internet connection problem. You can be stressed about it. Some people. For example, I don't always like to read everything on the screen. I like the pens and paper. So this needs a getting used to period. So giving them a couple of quiz, at least the first one or two, if they didn't do well, they had the chance to number three, four times to correct it because the first two, it's a getting used to period, like learning it about it. And of course, we have our, uh, normally we would, Maybe in the midterm or final, if you're having a, because we are a multidisciplinary and modular system, we always had a four different style of questions, multiple choice, short answers, uh, fill in the gaps, and a, a bit more classic um, around 200, 250 words answers. We again try to do the same. So they are following the same and you measure everybody's um, kind of capabilities because some people are really good at on the multiple choice some is good at expressing themselves on a longer so we try to keep the four different uh, question styles so they have their choices again uh, re to reflect their success or their skills their knowledge and of course uh, first two they were like always stressed about it was the time enough or not but then Later on, when they get used to what I receive as an email, or sometimes we are having a chatting, a group chat, and I have WhatsApps with the class, they are happy with it. They, there is no big uh, problems. And when I look at the average, how well they do, it's really good. It's uh, basically the success is above seventy percent, which is a really good, uh, in my opinion, for the class. And we are having both Turkish program and English program. They are equally having the same success, which also shows that the system is functioning very well. Regarding the teaching, one thing I myself didn't enjoy that much was that, uh, you know, the interaction was less because you students can see you, but of course you cannot see all of them very clearly. It's the small pictures you are having. And I'm used, I make lots of jokes in the class. And sometimes if I see, for example, they get tired because you are talking 45 minutes minimum, I always uh, turn the things onto jokes or if they are uh, joking, I very, not pick on them, but involve them in a, by joke into the topics. And it always is that I missed because that it, you don't have the chance to do it online. But uh, after a couple of lectures, I found a way I was writing. Even though I see their picture are there, I see. And then I was saying that I can see, for example, the wood. Uh, I see you, but is your soul also there? And then I can see lots of love coming. So we found our way. I think in the end, we were all set up. Of course, the starting first couple of weeks was tough for everybody, for students and for the lecturers, because you, you lose this face-to-face -face interaction. You cannot read their mimics. And because my way of teaching, I always follow the students' face impression. If they are not understanding it, they kind of often they get this very um, non-impressionist face. Then you know they are not following you. So I keep on trying different ways, different examples, put materials. And when they screen, it, it was very difficult first. But then I think we achieve because I when I ask them, how was it? Are you having and I always finish my classes by saying that if you have any questions, write me in this email and I re return them. I'm a, it doesn't matter whenever it is 
as soon as I noticed the email, sometimes three in the morning, which they are teasing me about that. What were I doing that late and I'm answering that late the mails, but we, we find our way. So it functions in my opinion. Very well. Yes, everyone uh, trying to find the best way to continue their lifestyle. Even we cannot have the human contact directly. Uh, technologies <coughs> giving us yeah. the hand to, to continue this. That's very really nice. Uh, also, I think this is the biggest learning we got from this pandemic. We 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 learned, uh, and it is very surprising how human being can very fast adapt. Really, we are very. Uh, even though we teach, we say that the humans are uh, with the evolution, we are very fast to adapt. It takes time, but for example, from the five billion years ago, you imagine from being a small uh, water organism and we become a walking proper humans, we adapt to the environment. But then again, um, when you think, we reached the top, we are very civilized, we don't need any further changing. Now we learn to go back to the initial times and learning to um, communicate and still have the same feelings uh, through the, for example, online lectures uh, or connections online and calling your families face to face. It's not the same as giving a hug, but now we are supposed to discover how to transfer our emotions through online. That's, I think that's the last hurdle we have to spring over but exactly. we are learning we are biologists. <laughs> yes. uh, professor for the end uh, maybe ask uh, for your advice for the applicants who would like to apply for this program and also uh, your advice even for the current students who is now uh, facing this situation that they cannot have the direct contact with you face to face but uh, taking the classes uh, through the digital platform. Can you share with us? Yes, uh, those who's applying for um, first time to be part of our university, part of our program, both for this expansion go for both for the uh, undergraduate and postgraduate students. Be ready that you need to, it, this is not a high school, you're not going to serve everything ready, but if you are ready to do extra reading in the guidelines and follow the world, you will love it and you'll be one of the best. So be ready for that. And uh, it's a little bit, we have an idiom, you would say, whatever you plant, this is what you harvest. If you don't work for it, you have nothing to harvest. So this is basically all about it. But those who use quarantine period or normally get used to being face to face with us and they're not. We already announced and I'm repeating here, contact us, me and all the other lecturers to every way. Can be WhatsApp, can be messengers, mails and so on. Ask your questions and write long emails. Sometimes often uh, it takes them a couple of writing back and forth because they send the one sentence, but then for us, it's difficult to figure out what they really think if, they, if it's not. Ask with the background, this is my conditions and these are the problems I'm facing. I did this part, what else I'm doing now? So if, you are, if they kind of put an effort to it, they will definitely have a good return and be satisfying for them. Do not hesitate to ask. I mean, we are here and uh, when we don't know, with these new developments, we ask our um, managers. So not knowing is not a, something you should be ashamed, but not asking is something you should be ashamed because in the end, you will be sad. We will be sad that you are sad. And when we say, why didn't you ask? It's too late. So do it on time, ask it. We'll, we are here to help. At least if we don't know, then we can say, we don't know why they let us to go to a higher level and ask the answer. So it's always good to ask. Being a scientist makes you, the skepticism should be always there. I'm not saying don't believe anyone, but be skeptical and question everything. Could it be? Because everybody can make mistakes. Sometimes when we are talking, we choose a wrong word. Do we mean it? No, but it's just a mistake. So that means everyone can do. So ask and make sure that is rightly understood. You know the right thing and you can move on from there. Don't be hesitating about that. 
That will be my best answer. Thank you, Professor. Thank you for joining us today. It was uh, our great honor to have you, to, to get to know you, and also to get uh, some information, especially about this molecular bio biology and genetics program. Uh, we wish you endless energy and good luck at what you are doing, because I see that uh, you are really great motivational uh, professor that our students love. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good luck with the uh, live uh, connections. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Uh, thank you for our viewers as well. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, don't forget that if you just join us uh, recently, you can find all our videos uh, on our Facebook page. Uh, let's be connected again on Wednesday. We will have our honorable guest. Uh, Gürkan Sal, the member of the Faculty of Dentistry, who is going to present the programs from this faculty. So we are very excited, waiting for it, and uh, see you on Wednesday. Let's be connected.